and welcome to the Tiny Human Knits podcast, my podcast about knitting, sewing, crochet, cross-stitch, and all manner of crafty goodness. My name is Laura, and I'm coming to you from High Level, Alberta, Canada, which is absolutely frigid right now. I woke up and it was minus 23 degrees. I think it's just minus 17 now, but winter has come with abandon, and um, my cat is pining because she can't go outside anymore. Not that we don't let her. I just open the door for her, she goes outside, sits on the step for about a minute, and then wants to come inside because it's freezing. Um, and I live here with my two pets, my bunny and my cat, and my husband is also here sometimes. Um, and you can find me online as Tiny Human Knits pretty much everywhere. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry, uh, Instagram, YouTube obviously, and I have an Etsy shop under the same name. And I also have a Ravelry group for the podcast, which is Tiny Human Knits Podcast in the Ravelry Groups tab. And if anyone's ever wondering, I do always have links in the down bar. Just if you don't want to have to go searching for things, you can just click on the link that I add there. So it just makes life a little bit easier. And if you check out the Ravelry group now, you can find that I, we are having a sweater knit along right now. It's going till the end of December. It started August 1st. And it's any sweater aged... I think I said three, three years and up, I think. Don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure though. I should know that. It's my gal. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you check that out and if you've been knitting a sweater for the past couple months, you can still enter it as long as it wasn't 50% finished by the time August 1st rolled around, you can add that. So if you're new to the podcast, you can absolutely add your stuff. Um, and a big welcome to people who are new to the podcast and people who have been watching from the beginning. I really appreciate it and I find this lots of fun, so I'm going to continue doing it. And, yes. Anyway, uh, normally I would start with what I'm wearing, but as what I'm wearing and FOs rolls into one thing, I will just carry on with that. So what I'm wearing and my first finished object for today is my pavement sweater. I knit this out of my own hand dyed yarn. This is in the Schwagnum colorway, uh, named by my husband. I did not pick that name. Um, and it's a simple top down. I think everyone and their mom has made this, but it actually, as I was knitting it, I wasn't too keen on the gauge. I thought it was going to look sloppy and just a little bit, I don't know, lopsided kind of thing. I don't normally knit on such a loose gauge. I'm I'm not a tight knitter, but I prefer my knitting to be more densely knit. But with this one, I did go down one needle size. Um, so I think in the pattern it's a four, I think 4.5, but I went down to a four millimeter instead, just because the 4.5 and this yarn is a little bit thinner than normal fingering weight, I think. Um, so I went, down a needle size, but I went up um, a pattern size just to make it to make up the difference because the gauge I was getting with the four millimeter was going to work out pretty much the same. I think that's what I thought anyway, and it worked out fine. It fits really well. I used um, 3.5 millimeter for the garter sections. That one you're supposed to use a three millimeter, but I had one three millimeter needle, which was a 40 inch cord, um, one of my fixed circulars, and I cast on um, with that needle and I got all the way through the garter rib and the, um, the garter ridge and the short row of shaping in the back to get the longer collar in the back and then I realized that I had done the whole thing as a Mobius strip, so just in this big circle, and then I had to do it again and I cast it on again and I got three rows in before I noticed I did it again. So I just thought, do you know what? Never mind this whole kerfuffle. I'll just grab my interchangeable set. I'll use my 3.5 millimeters and it's not gonna make that much of a difference, especially in garter. So I did that and it turned out absolutely fantastically. I did not do um, alternating skeins because color blocking doesn't bother me very much, but I did do the because all hand dyed skeins are going to be slightly different. The lightest skein from what I could tell I used for the top, and I don't know if you can tell in the sleeves, these actually have three different colorways. So it's a one colorway up until, uh, let's say about here, maybe? 
I'm not even entirely sure. I think about here, and then I use the second colorway, or second uh, second skin here, and you can tell it's just slightly darker at the end. And I just use that on the sleeve, so it goes the lightest to darkest in the body, and I actually really like it a lot. Um, it's almost too cold to wear in my house right now because we don't have central heating. We have a wood stove in the upstairs portion of the house, and then the basement has in-floor heating, which does quite a lot to actually heat the house, but we don't have like an actual heating, like blowing in the vents sort of situation. So I have a tendency to walk around in sweatpants and, and a couple sweaters now, actually. <clears throat> but it's getting cold. It's getting cold. We have lots of snow. It's very exciting. But besides that, what else did I want to say about this? I feel like I'm missing something. But I don't think so. That's pretty much it. I really like it. Um, I'm definitely going to be making myself sorry I've got a frog in my throat <coughs> I'm definitely going to be making myself more fingering weight sweaters definitely because this worked so well and I actually just used two full skeins and then a tiny little bit of a third skein which was just used on the sleeves to because I, I knew I was going to run out so did that instead but yeah, I think that's everything. I really feel like I'm missing something. If I did, I might put it on the screen, put it in the down bar. I'm not entirely sure. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So I've got two finished objects for this round of podcast. So my second finished object is a pair of socks. And I'll just put these on the blockers. I'm really, really happy with these socks. Um, on my, lad po my last podcast, I believe I showed the skein of yarn that I wanted to use for a pair of socks because I really wanted some happy, speckly socks. So I dyed up a skein of my sugar cookie colorway, which I'm hoping to have in the shop by next week if anyone's interested. I haven't got the yarn for it yet. Um, I want to have on... A squishy sock base and also a Stellina sock base because I think this would look amazing in a sparkly sock. Now I haven't sewn in the ends or blocked them yet because I just finished them a little while ago but here they are and I love these. So as I said these are a uh, sugar cookie colorway and I knit them I do see if with these I knew the yarn was slightly thicker because this is a base that I had before which I might bring back because it is it feels like it would be a very very sturdy sock so I did 30 stitches for the bottom for the bottom of the foot and the heel um, but then I just did 28 stitches for the top just because I wanted a little bit of extra space for the heel but I didn't want the whole sock to be too big so I did a toe up and I cast on 12 stitches each needle on Judy's Magic Castle, which is my usual. Increased the top eight times and the bottom nine times. And that's how I got the uneven amount. And then I just knit until it is six inches long. And then I start my gusset. And I think I did 11 gusset increases. And then I did the heel turn. And then I did two more inches of straight stockinette. And then I always do a one by one twisted rib. And I cast off or bind off with a, uh, what is it, Jenny Surprisingly Stretchy Cast Off? Which only works for me if I'm doing one by one rib. Um, otherwise, it looks really bad. So if I'm doing um, like a two by one rib or a two by two rib, uh, which is something I do usually for my husband's socks because I don't know why, but a one by one rib on him looks a bit odd. Maybe that's just me. But if I do it on anything else, it does look very sloppy. But on a one by one rib, especially a one by one twisted rib, it looks really good. It finishes it really nicely. But yeah, here's a close up. I adore this colorway. And I do have enough left to do a pair of shorty socks. Or I might use it to make a pair of socks for my sister in law, who I got for a Christmas box. And I'm 100% sure she doesn't watch. So. I got her for Christmas box, and she's also a knitter, so I'll be getting her some yarn, obviously. Um, it might be for my own stash, and I'm, I might order it. I'm not entirely sure yet, but I do have enough time to figure that out. 
but she also has size five feet. So they're super, super tiny, even smaller than mine. So I was thinking of making her a pair or two of socks because she doesn't know how to knit her own socks because she's got four children. She doesn't have no time for that. So I could very easily get a couple pairs of size five socks out super quick. So I think I might do that. But yeah, that was my finished objects. They actually go rather nicely together. But I have so much leftovers, I'm really going to have to start doing a Cozy Memories blanket or a hex puff or something. So now I can move on to works in progress. Um, I don't really have much to talk about in that aspect because I have been doing shop stuff for the past week pretty exclusively. I have got a little bit of knitting done on my husband's socks, my Tex-Mex socks. I can show you those here. I am using Drops Fable in the Tex-Mex colorway because it is my husband and I's favorite spice mix that you can buy at the store. That's why I bought it. So I'm still on the first sock. I brought these with me when we went out for dinner the other day with some of my husband's co-workers. I haven't told them they're for him. I think he might know, but he's also pretty forgetful, so who knows. But I wasn't sure what kind of heel I wanted to put in. I think it's about eh, 8 inches in now, maybe. But I decided I was going to do a true afterthought heel just because I couldn't be bothered to put in a fish lips kiss heel. <laughs> and uh, actually, I'm not even sure if this would be long enough yet. I might be able to. We'll see. We'll see. But um, I didn't want to break up the pattern. It ended up being more patterned than I was sort of expecting it to be. And I didn't want to break that up. And it was just too cute. So I might... Uh, if it's the right length, I'll put in a fish lips kiss. Um, if I've knit too far along for that, then I will put in an afterthought heel. So, that's something to do. I really need to get on making him these socks, because I want him to get a couple pairs of socks for Christmas, and uh, I need, I'm a little bit behind. Although, I know I have, like, almost two months, but... And I'm, I'm not going to push myself with Christmas presents. I've done this every year for years where I try to make something for everyone. And I know that now, especially with the shop doing well, I don't have time for it. And so I'm more focusing on his gifts and my mother's, my mother-in-law and my mom. Other than that, everyone else can wait in my mind. It's just a day of the year. It doesn't have to get there all that time. Especially since most of my family I'm not even gonna see. Um, at Christmas time, so it's not like it really makes a difference. So I'll show you really quick the other socks that I'm going to be making for him, the ones that I'm planning. So I already had this Stray Cat Fibers uh, self-striping gobstopper ball uh, ready, started. This has started a really long time ago and I really should pick it up again, although I am sort of worried that it is going to be too big. But then, I always have to remind myself that my feet are a lot smaller than his, so don't judge a sock by your own foot. Yes. So this one is a 68 stitch. Um, I might rip it back and do it on a smaller needle or a smaller stitch count. I'm not entirely sure. I think I should probably just leave it though. But these right now are sitting on, uh, I cast these on with a size 1, so 2.25, but I moved them onto my 2mm needles because I wanted to knit the sugar cookie socks, so, and I only have two pairs of 2.5mm needles, so I just stole this set of needles, so hopefully I remember to take these off before I start knitting again, otherwise the gate will go slightly in. And then another pair of socks that I want to make for him is this turtle pearl yarns and this is in the trench coat colorway I've shown these before but I think I'm just trying to guilt trip myself into making socks <laughs> so making sure I remember <clears throat> that he should get some socks uh, but these because she's put them in 250 gram balls maybe I should do a two at a time maybe I don't really have second sock syndrome so I don't really know if that's necessary but Maybe, maybe, maybe. These I might knit on a size 1 or a size 0. It's because it is a little bit more yardage for 100 grams, but we'll see. 
We'll see when I actually get around to skinning them up or rolling, falling. You know what I mean. There was another ball of yarn that I wanted to use. Oh, sorry for that. I'm not entirely sure where I put it. He um he dyed some of his own yarn a couple months ago now when I just had food coloring dyes to use and like Kool-Aid and stuff like that, but he dyed himself some yarn and I was gonna be making him some socks out of that as well, but we'll see how much time I have. This is definitely the year of socks. But yeah, it's definitely the year of socks. Last year was my year of mittens, like gloves. I think I counted it up. I made 19 pairs of gloves last year. And speaking of that, I really need to make myself some gloves. I made 19 pairs of gloves last year. None of them were for me, so I don't have any. But I have a skein of yarn that was meant to be turned into a pair of, of gloves. And I've had it for probably about a year. Uh, I think I have it here. Yeah, so I have this Ultra Alpaca, I can't remember what the colorway name is, but I've had it for about a year, and I made, last year I made two pairs of uh, mittens out of this exact same yarn, exact same colorway. I think it's called the Grove Mitten Pattern by Jared Flood. I think it's Jared Flood. I know it's a Brooklyn Tweed Pattern, but I think it's Jared Flood, and it is just beautiful. It, it's a twisted stitch pattern and which makes it really fitted. Like it's got a twisted stitch rib as well on the bottom, like a, a spiraling um, twisted stitch and it's just gorgeous. I need a pair for myself. I made two pairs last year because people, a lot of the requests I get don't have a specific pattern in mind. They just want a certain thing in a certain color with this, and they give me a sort of guideline, like if they want stranded color work or just, you know, cables or anything like that. So I usually pick. And my mother-in-law last year ordered mittens for all of her daughters-in-law, which she has, besides me, she's got three, and then her own daughter. So I made four pairs of mittens for her. So I picked patterns based on each person's personality. So like one is like absolutely super into horses. So I made a like a selbu mitten with a uh, horse design on the top. And one, the one who is a knitter as well, I wanted to make something for her that she wouldn't be able to make for herself. Um, it's something a little bit too advanced for her. So I made her, it was a base of just a basic mitten pattern like white ribbed cuff boring kind of thing and then I made um a link the pattern if I remember it's got a lace a beaded lace overlay that you put on top and then you put a little button that you can attach it so pretty and then the one I wasn't too sure of but I wanted to give her something a little bit more elegant which is what I made this one out of and then my sister-in-law um my 20 year old sister-in-law <laughs> Super nerd. I designed a pair of mittens for her that had uh, a bumblebee and a crown on it. She's a princess. <laughs> but, um, I really need to make myself some mittens. It is cold outside. I was brushing off the car yesterday and my hands were freezing. So cold. Um, besides that, works in progress. I do have a test knit for my beautiful friend Rosie on my needles, but she wants to keep it a little bit secret for a while. She wants to release it on November 13th, I believe. So I will be showing that um, a little later, although I'll show you the yarn. Because it is her hand dyed yarn as well. So I'm using this yarn, which is called Christmas Morning. It's dyed by Rosie of Pixel Atlantis. And I actually bought this last year um, I ordered it while my husband and I were having our anniversary dinner. So we're sitting at the restaurant and I'm ordering yarn, which is pretty classic. So, but I saw this and it was so beautiful and I had to have it. Um, and then I got it after Christmas. And I decided that since it's her pattern and because I don't know if I'm going to have time to make myself specific Christmas socks, that I would use this because it's gorgeous. It's Christmassy, and it is knitting up really well. I wish I could show you, but I'm going to keep that in my bag until later. So those are all my works in progress. I did bring out my Caspian cardigan, or not cardigan, bleh, Caspian pullover. I have not had a chance to work on it. And 
I really hope this weekend I get most of the stuff that I need to get finished finished um, shop wise and then I can start working on that hopefully 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 so those are all my works in progress pretty much there's a couple that are are yet to be brought into the world as a tour I want to cast on my bestort pullover so badly um, I've got two other sweaters I need to finish first and I'm thinking I might make that my birthday sweater um, my birthday is the 3rd of January so it's a couple like nine days after Christmas so I might be able to take the time between Christmas and my birthday to make it so I want I want to take a little bit of a break after Christmas so I might do that and make something specifically for myself but uh, I've got cast on itis without the time unfortunately but I can move on to acquisitions which I do have a couple of first thing I'll show you I ordered this I believe I ordered it in either the end of August or beginning of September I can't actually remember but I ordered a blanket quantity so it's gonna look like a heck of a lot so I ordered this from the wool warehouse and it took a long time to get here okay so last episode I was talking about how I was missing three items from the UK that I'd ordered a million years ago and they hadn't come well they all came last week makes me very happy so I have 10 skeins of Caskey 220 superwash and oh they just have numbers why do people do that it's so boring anyway I've got 10 of each of this beautiful cream and this deep 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 red I'm pretty sure this one is the same color as my Deodora top is but I will be making a blanket, a stranded colorwork blanket, out of these two colors. We've picked the pattern. It's from my husband's cousin, as I said. Uh, we picked the pattern forever ago. It, I think she asked in March or April. I can't remember. But it took a long time to find the right yarn. And I think she probably wanted something a little bit softer uh, she wanted a soft squishy cozy blanket and I had to tell her that you can't have a color work blanket that's made out of like merino it won't work it'll look like junk especially something so heavy because it's gonna start dragging on itself and it'll stretch out all the pattern so I just I have to tell her, but it's gonna have to be wool. We'll make it super wash so you can wash it. But it's gonna soften up. The more you use it, the more softness is gonna come out. So we finally sort of, I don't wanna say compromise, because it's not like we had to compromise, but we, we settled on that thing. And that was my first package that I was expecting. The second one was a stranded Dye Works yarn that I got in the mail finally. Um, I'm not going to show that one though because it is a gift and they'll probably know that it's for them so I'll just leave that. It would arrive safely. It's beautiful. I love her yarn. She's having, she had a huge update today I believe so it's her birthday, her second birthday of her store so and her actual birthday. But the second package, I or third package I got sorry, is from Sarah of Cauldron of Colors and I, this one <laughs> took a while. I think we were both worried. But um, I'm, I'm getting used to the fact that everything takes forever today to get here. But we did a swap. I sent her a bag and some mini skeins. And she sent me a colorway that I had chosen out of her shop. And it is so pretty. It's called Prospero. This is on her 4-ply uh, Blue Angel Base. Sorry. I don't know how to read. It's a BFL nylon, which I am so excited about. I've never had BFL before, and it feels amazing. Look at that. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. So I picked this one out from her shop. But, oh, and there's her card if you're interested. But she also sent me an absolutely ridiculously massive ball of regia. Look at this. I could get like three pairs of socks out of this. And it's 150 grams, so I could actually get three pairs of socks out of this. I love that it's tweed. I love this. 
but she also sent me some West Yorkshire spinners and this is 75% wool 25% nylon so bright ideal for socks and I have se I'm really excited about this not as excited as this but I have seen so many people use this yarn and I've wanted to so badly and it is so it's got a good hand feel <laughs> I'm really excited I need to make myself so many socks I think next year will still be the year of socks because uh, yeah no, and I've only been making socks for a year, so I really need to get on. I've only got six pairs of socks for myself. I need to work on that. So, yeah. I'm so excited. She also put in some stitch markers. Oh, you can't really see all of them, but they're all yarn and sheepies. Which I need to hang up on my little stitch marker hook there. And also... There was chocolates that were gone like within two minutes and then some hot chocolate pack and these are from england so they taste better much much better but i also hear canada chocolate is better than america chocolate so i feel like there's a hierarchy of chocolate makers. my last acquisitions are um we went to edmonton last week for my husband's work and I went to Michael's, as you do. And the Michael's we went to, because uh, I have worked at Michael's before, and each Michael's is different depending on what sells at each individual store. So if you find, like, a lot of cross-stitch stuff in one store but not in another, it's because more people buy cross-stitch stuff at this one store. So if anyone's ever curious about that, that is why they do that. I remember the store I worked at didn't have any felting stuff, but I know the one in the other end of the city had a ton, so it's because of that, really. But they have, at that particular one, they had a crap load of Patton's Croy. Like, I'm just chucking them around now. Um, they had pretty much all the colors I'd ever seen, which was very odd because most of the time they only had the same, like, six colors, but I got these three because... I'll, I'll make myself socks. I really like my other Patton's Croy socks. They're very sturdy feeling, so I feel like it's good. It's good. It's good. So yeah, I got these three. As an impulse buy, I also got myself a Christmas box because it's Christmas soon. I'm sure you all have noticed that I've got my pencil tree set up back there. It's not decorated, though. I do not decorate before November 11th. So, I put this up because it's dark all the time now, essentially. So, I don't like having my overhead light uh, on, my room light, because I end up sitting in a way where my shadow is on all of the projects I'm working on, so I can barely see it anyway. And I always have Christmas lights strung up in my office room slash whatever room, because I, I always have. I Everywhere I live, I always have Christmas lights strung up in my house somewhere so it creates a nice ambiance so I put up the tree because it's pre-lit I didn't have to add lights to it and I needed the extra light that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it I will decorate it next week though what was my point it's Christmas <gasps> oh, I'm not stressing out at all what are you talking about so my last little segments that I want to talk about. I don't even feel like I should have a blather part in the end because I just do that in between the times. But I have been dyeing quite a bit of yarn and I'm actually very excited about it because I got a bunch of new colors in the mail um, last week, week before, and I have been playing and it's been so much fun. So most of these I'm thinking of putting them in the shop either later today which is Friday or tomorrow which is Saturday and I do have a sale going on in the shop where it's 20% off everything because we need winter tires and they're not cheap so first bits of yarn that I have going in uh, this one here is called page 394 so those are my first ones um, Let's see if I can. Sorry, it's all in a big pile. 
Oh, where's my other one? Oh, there you go. I've got watermelon starburst. This one I'm calling bitchin'. And this one I died based on the first ep or not the first episode, but the second season of Stranger Things, which we've already binge watched. I have got perfectly pink. And this is my perfect pink. Very soft and delicate. There's no other colors, it's just a tonal pink. I've got Pop Rocks. And. And some of these I haven't named yet. So I've got this. I really like this one, actually. I keep looking at my stuff and being like, I could make a... A breathing space sweater out of that. Or I could make a boxy out of that. It's a uh, work hazard, I think. Is that one there? This one I really, really like. It's orange tones, purple specks. I've got that one. As you can see, I'm totally into to spark like um to speckles right now. And this one is actually probably close to my favorite. And then I've got a lilac. My hair gets on everything. And then I also have this very very deep chocolatey brown. But I'm waiting for more undyed yarn, um, some with some speckles, or not speckles, I keep saying speckles, sparkles. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I love sparkly yarn, especially at Christmas time. But let me know if you're interested in those, if you'd like me to put them in right away. And uh, yeah, I have been cross-stitching something ferocious, so I'm going to have a lot of Knit Notions pouches in by the 12th. A lot. Quite a few. So if you would like one of those for a Christmas gift or one for yourself, there is going to be a lot in there. So keep your eyes peeled and I will be working on those <laughs> all the rest of today, the whole weekend. I'm trying to get a certain amount done in. So I should probably go back to work so I will edit this and upload it and then keep it cross stitching my little heart out. I'm trying to keep myself warm because the cold is totally seeping into this house. So I think that's all I have to show you. So I will get back to work. I hope you all are having a good start to your winter. Um, it doesn't seem like anywhere else is getting the same level of um, winter season as it is in Alberta, which it seems like it's all around because I know Edmonton and Calgary have quite a bit of snow now too. But I hope everyone's enjoying that. I hope everyone had a good Halloween. Um, we didn't get any trick-or-treaters because we're in the middle of nowhere, so no one comes by. But I hope you all are well, and I will see you next time. I hope to do one next week, because I'm going to have a lot of stuff going to the shop, so I kind of want to show that off. So I will see you next week, and have a lovely weekend. Bye!